welcome. You are here with Dr. Nilda Perez with Business Foresight, creating strategies towards your extraordinary future. Hello, um, this is Dr. Nilda Perez once again with another awesome guest at the uh, Dr. Nilda Business Foresight Show. I'm always looking for innovators and creators and people that really, really work hard in changing the world. And um, Pejin, Pejin um, Echevarria was one of those people. I, I saw uh, Pejin on Facebook about two years ago. And I said, you know what? I want her on my show. Of course, my show was uh, not even completely developed yet. But I knew at that moment that you were going to be that person that I was going to be able to interview. So um, I remember reaching out to you, and I don't think I got a response in just life. But then I met somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and I was like, Manny Torres, please, you know this woman. He's like, oh, my gosh, she's awesome. She would be perfect. <laughs> and I said, she is. She's perfect. <laughs> and so I'm so glad, so, so glad to have you on the show. I'm so happy. I'm excited. Sorry I didn't reach out to you later on, but I'm thrilled. This is great. great. You know what? I have to tell you, everything happens at the right time. I'm a huge believer of that. So it just wasn't the the right time. Yes. I know it's the truth. Yeah. So as as always, I always like to give a little bio so that people will know who you are and where you came from. So Pejin um, Echeverria makes uh, makes great leaders. That that's her her quest in life. This is who she is. She pushes, prods, and provokes leaders and entrepreneurs to get out of their comfort zone so that they can have an impact and influence and inspire other to, others to action. Pejin is in the Motivational Speakers Hall of Fame. She's closed millions of dollars of deals in an award-winning entrepreneur. Her clients include 10% of the Fortune 500 companies, um, global corporations, 12% of um, direct sales, direct selling news um, for 2016 in North America, and the top 50 of all branches in the U.S. military. Pejin is an author of Sometimes You Need to Kick Your Own Butt, I Love It, Um, Bragging Rights, um, Transform Your Team in 21 Days, and I've Got the Power to Lead and Think, and 50 Success Secrets of Feisty, Focused, Fearless, Fun Female Leaders. Love it. Love it. So I've listened, Pejin, I've listened to some of your talks and you are energetic. You are funny. You make people cry one second, laugh the next. You're amazing. And you are a ball of fire. I I try. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So, and I love that. I love your, your energy. So I want to start from, from this point, because one of the things that attracted me to you is that you, like, like myself, come from a, a psychology background. Mm. You have your master's in social work. Correct. Just like me. As, as a matter of fact, you, went to, you graduated with your master's from Adelphi University. I went to undergrad at Adelphi University, and then I graduated with my master's from Fordham. Yeah, kindred spirits, right? And I'm a Bronx girl, so. <laughs> and I'm a Bronx important. girl. And there we go. So you see good things come out of the Bronx. <laughs> hey, that's, that's right. I'm telling you the best. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's phenomenal. So what made you, because you're great at what you do. I've seen you. I've heard you. Uh, you have a ton of awards right behind you to prove. And my point is, how on earth? Do you go from social work to being this dynamite motivational speaker and have really actually changing organizations and the way that minorities, you know, you know, take action? How do you, how do yeah. you, you do that? So, so some people don't know that behind the scenes of my growing up, right? I was in the Bronx. I, I was in, I had, trouble. I was, I was a troubled person, troublemaker. And there was a, po- a moment in where I had closed my eyes and I said, there's got to be more for me than this. And truly I had this vision, epiphany, awareness that what I wanted to do was actually be like this. You know, I have a, I saw 
I actually saw myself being on a TV, having an interviewer, and having this. I just saw it. I didn't know what it meant. I had no clue, nada, nothing. But I knew that I was being told internally to take action. Okay. And that led me to leave the Bronx, and I went to go and live in Spain. I was 17 and a half. I had little, no money, and quickly spent anything that I had, and I opened... Um, the first bilingual nursery school in Madrid. Uh, I was 17 and a half, 18 at that point, got an investor, opened this because I couldn't find a job. So when you come from the street, you hustle. And I couldn't really speak Spanish. I mean, I spoke Spanish because we, I grew up with my grandmother and my mi abuelita. Uh -huh. y, if you put it, I, it, for those of you that are listening to speak Spanish, you'll understand this. She would say to me, ¿Quieres comer algo? Yo siempre decía, sí. Here's a book of the trouble. See, you know, you want a little money. Yes. Right, money. right. But my Spanish was really that, that was it. You know, I was in a, a Spanish gang. Well, we I, is, it, is, it, is it fair to say that we were very bilingual? Because I know I was brought up in a very Spanish home, but then you throw some of those English words in there. Oh, let me tell you, I was in a, a new language. Was a gang, a Latina gang, and we would say, man, let's go up to the roof. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a roofo, but we were all doing the same thing. You take an English word and you throw an O at the end or an A, and if nobody says anything, it must be Spanish. That's right. Right? And so when I went, I, I went to Spain because the teacher had said, you know, I should always, I should go to my roots, that I, that I was going down a bad path. And if I really knew where I came from, my family's Puerto Rican, but she wanted me to go back to the, the, the history, right? Okay. And that's what, what led me to Spain. And I lived there for three years and spent another year living in Mexico. And so my, so I speak with a Jota, a Teta, and a Mexla, and I, my Puerto Rican family always laughs, had laughed with me. Uh -huh. But what happened to me was after moving, I came back to States and I moved up from receptionist to national sales manager to director of operations and eventually president of uh, a direct selling company, all corporate. And like I shared earlier, I was fascinated with why women were helping or hindering themselves and how organizations were helping and hindering them. Why was I only, the only Latina? Why was the only female? And that was driving me really crazy because now I was offering people jobs. Now I was opening doors for them. Now I was mentoring them. They kept on saying things like, I, no, I can't, I'm not ready. So I went to my master's for social work because I wanted to understand I, the psychology. I wanted to understand how organizations are developed and create an experience where, where we collide, right? We are ambitious. We want to be successful, but the organization structure kind of collides with us. And I wanted to find out how we can mesh with it so I, that those that want to thrive could. Okay, awesome. So, so now you started in this quest to understand people and to and the, the purpose was that you were in the uh, leadership development. Right. You wanted to develop leaders. Right, right. And what happened with us after the social work, I started doing a lot of work in, well, social work forces you to work. When you go to your social work, Yes. You have to work in non-for-profits. And I started working non-for-profits and I started implementing what I knew about leadership and what I knew about success and what I knew about that. And eventually ended up creating the largest Latina support center in New York City that was named um, one of the top 10 Latina family support centers in the country, which led to Montel Williams back then when he had his big show, not now, but when he was right. the star. Right, right. He heard about my work and put me on TV, and I ended up being on, he won his first Emmy with a piggy moment. And he's the one that said to me, he goes, what are, he took me, he put me against the wall, was in my face, says, what are you doing? Nobody talks the way you talk. Nobody does what you need to do. What you, the way you think, the way you talk, you need to be out there speaking. You need to be out there communicating. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about clueless 
Right. And he said, I'm signing up for the National Speakers Association. You're going to learn. That's how I got into this business, by speaking, and you need to do this. And I was, I was like, okay, all right. right. I'll do that, right? I can, I can do that. I, I can do that. I don't know what I'm doing, but I could do it, whatever. Right. And, and so I was on his show. I was on all the talk shows. I was on every talk show except for Oprah and Jerry Springer. Hmm. And everything in between, I was there and right. wrote books and was started speaking and started sharing my truth and in my way, doing it my my way, right? Um, you can't be anybody else except for yourself. And that's really how I started. So that's how I went from social work to speaking to authorship and then creating events and working with the military and all the generals. And and uh, uh, President Obama was one of my uh, my keynote speakers when I did an uh, event. So, you know, it's kind of like, wow, how did this kid from the Bronx get from here to there? Is yeah, right, right. From a gang? Yeah, from a gang member. Yeah, from a gang le- member to a leader, a true leader who is who is out there and is actually changing the world. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. See, that's innovation, because and and we know that as and you know that I'm all for education. I wouldn't have spent as much money as I did on education had I, had I not been. But what I always tell people is that education really boxes you in. It really, it boxes you and it tells you, okay, so now you have a degree, now you have to work. Social workers work for nonprofits and, and you know, whatever, CPAs work for, uh, you know, uh, banks. And, you know, the reality is that they really um, kind of stifle our creativity. Yeah. But even while you were there, your mind was going and you were creating and developing and doing things that... You know, honestly, there's not a lot of, there aren't a lot of social workers that are out there on, you know, on a TV show. It just, it's just and not it's so, so, I'm so with you on this. One of the things that, that really challenged me when I was going for my master's in social worker, because I did not come from a non-for-profit background, I, I came from a business background. Mm-hmm. What was really fascinating to me was, and I would call out the teachers, I am not someone that could be really quiet. <laughs> so, you know, I clo- closed down the campus one day. Okay. I started the Coalition for Diversity at Adelphi because I got really pissed. I got pissed that every time they gave anecdotal information, it was if you're Irish and white, you're a drunk. If you're a Hispanic, you're pregnant. If you're, you know, it, it, if you're on welfare, you must be black. I mean, it was just like always saying that. And I was like, cut, you're the, you, you, are the creators of this this lie right you're, you're perpetuating a lie that's a lie a lie a lie and you're never giving anecdotal information about how uh, a gang member can change her life and actually be sitting here you're never giving the anecdotal information of saying a, a teen mom can be president of an organization you're never sharing that and i was i was not happy right mm-hmm. So I, we, I pulled together a group of people, we, we coalesced, we closed it down, we had a big meeting. I, I think that you're 100% right. Yeah. Edu- educators tend to speak from their experience, but they don't allow you to explore new ideas. I truly believe that, remember when you were in kindergarten, you would go see the fire station, you'd do a little walk down the block, you'd go to a walk to the grocery store, you'd go to the, you, you were exposed to these things. What I truly believe is that we have to, educators need to take excursions with the people, get out of the stupid classroom, go to see uh, a a bank and see what those opportunities, go take social workers and know, guess what? If I had known, okay, Nilda, let me tell you something. And all of you that are listening, social worker lie number one, social workers don't make money. That is a lie, 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 lie. Absolutely. Number two, number two is that every corporation, if you want to work in that environment, they love social workers, learning development, so you can be making your six figures. The best boss I ever had was a boss who used to be in New York City, New York City commissioner, Gladys Garion. She was my boss for a while. And my salary was pathetic. 
and she was my boss and she brand new. She just got in and she came to me and she said, you know, what did I never, I, the social workers at school all said that you're never going to make money. Here I am running this agency and doing this. And she came back to me and she said, hello. And she did a lot of stuff just like that. Hello. This is not working for me when I saw you getting paid. Did nobody tell you how to negotiate your salary here in non for profit and I was like, well, I knew how to do negotiate at corporate, but they all told me that I'll never make money in social work. She was like, no, let's figure this out. And she raised my salary three times in that one meeting, right? Because she was an advocate to say, especially for Latinas, to be able to say, you deserve to earn what you are. You are valuable. You are, you are passionate and you are worthy of being paid well. And right. You know, she, that moment for me was as much a awakening and continues to be awakening. So when I see myself slipping into poor behavior, you know, like, oh, gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 No. I'm no. worth more than that, you know? Right, right, exactly. Your education, your experience, your all of that comes together. Right. And tenacity, perseverance, to be, you know, to be an entrepreneur is, is not an easy feat. And yet, it's the most rewarding, the most rewarding feat ever. So, um, so I totally agree. So now you take all of this because see what I'm, what I'm seeing, I'm, I have this visual. I'm, I'm, I'm a creator as you can see. So I have this visual of you having this big basket and you're going along picking all of the best, the best information, the best, um, lessons, the best, and you're just putting them all in and they're going to create Beijing. Right, Peggy, right, but right, and all of this is going to create Peggy Echeverria to become right. this bigger and better person to be able to change the world. Right. This is what I'm seeing. This is my visual. Right. So, then when did you decide I'm going to create leaders? I'm going to create great leaders. When did that epiphany come that you said, This is my mission in life, I'm doing this? So about 20 years ago, maybe longer than that, maybe more than that, 25 years ago. Um, so I've been in business 21 years. Can I get something so I can show you? Sure. So let me just share. So about 20, I would say about 25 years ago. You know, I was in kind of meditation and clarity and saying, who am I? What am I? And um, I took a book. Actually, you could see this book, right? It is. I think this thing yeah. is old. Pobre libro. <laughs> this, is, this has been around. Now, there are things that I can yeah. show you that I can't show you. But, so 20... I would say 25 years ago, right? I started putting this stuff uh, on in my book, and that my I just knew that God's mission for me. I'll read it. This is over 20 over 25 years ago. God's mission for me. I inspire people to be leaders in their lives. I impact people so they become leaders that transform lives. I teach others to become leaders that inspire, motivate, and educate others. I lead a large, successful, profitable company. That I added later, right? And I added this line because this thing started popping up for me. When I think I can't, God tells me I can. You oh, see that? yes. Yes. So the book, you know, and I always have my little notes. So this book, and I wrote this, and you can see that I taped it in. But this book has all of my, it started what, it started writing, I started writing of I want to be. And then I crossed that one out and then it, Years later, I grew and changed, and then it said, um, I will be, and then I changed and grew and, and realized that I can decide whatever I want, and then I crossed it all out. This is like, this has to be at least 15 years of I am, yeah. right? I These am. Words, I am. Um, yeah. And then I surround it. So, and, and this has, like, all the, the places where I'm speaking and, and the things that I'm doing and and who I'm doing it with, and they're all, 
you know, it's what, I don't read it every day, but I know, and, and here's what I know right. is the truth, right? And this is what I tell people, it's not, and you started it saying this, I now have learned to, that to be a, lead, a great leader, to develop leaders, which is my mission, I have to be in a place a feeling and receiving my truth. So my truth for me is I, I'm like the Yoda to, to, to help leaders be great. And in my world, I've been able to, I was, I've been blessed with attracting opportunities to develop myself in a way far beyond that. So I've worked with admirals and generals. One of my best experiences is um, I trained 2,000 military officers from all branches of the military plus 21 ally countries who came to an experience that I created with 50 professional role players out in a field. Actually, if you look right there in the corner, you see where I'm pointing? Yes, I do. Those are my professional role players, and we created tribes where they – our military officers learn, needed to learn to build relationships, negotiations with tribal leaders that were not like any that they've ever seen. And the point of that was to really push and prod them so that they could elevate who they are and see themselves as the leaders we want them to be. You could only do that if you start giving people an experience of you can be more than this. And now we do a lot more work to be able to communicate. Like the people that are watching right now, you have within you a power and a passion within that's been whispering very quietly to you. And the whispers often come with uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. So when you're having someone a negative feeling, you're having a negative thought, you're having um, a, a self-beat-up moment, and we all have that. Right. You have to understand that within your heart, your soul, in yourself, your higher, bigger self, is the complete opposite of that. And the, the fight within is that you're not allowing yourself to be magnificent. Okay. Okay. So the fight, the other, uh, the the fear, the pain, the lack of confidence, the the sense of I'm a loser, the sense and how awful that makes you feel, mm -hmm. because your inner self that knows the truth of how magnificent you are is saying, "Hey, you could think that way, but I'm not going there. I know you're here. I know you're." here inside i know you're this magnificent being i know that so you if you want to think this way about yourself i'm not going down to you okay I, no. and so there's a clash and you're like man you should be believing me. come on yeah. god you should be believing me god, let me tell you how bad my life is like no that's your story okay. i'm telling you life is a miracle okay awesome yeah, so here is a question for you. Mm -hmm. Why do leaders and entrepreneurs need to practice influence and the ability to inspire others? Great question. Everybody thinks it comes naturally. Hmm. Everybody thinks that someone looking with presence or with confidence or, or that they feel so powerful that they, they, they can inspire an audience that so that, comes naturally and so they'll use the excuse oh that's who they are when in truth of the matter is the only reason that the person you're looking at having that is that they've practiced it they've learned techniques they've learned and taken the time to really learn what those look like and so when somebody becomes a leader they get the promotion oh, we're great we're great and then they might get re they started hearing people getting pissed off at them. But, you know, they get the word from people saying, well, I don't like, you know, she, who does she think she is? And, and you're, you're, you start thinking that it's them and never realizing and taking the full responsibility that it's you. It's how you're exuding stuff. And I believe that we have some great leaders 
when they learn how to be magnetic, when they learn some of the skills, and that's why we use professional role players. That's why in my coaching, we'll, I'll coach someone for a few months and then we'll bring them in to have a professional experience with professional actors, role players that, that I've created a scenario. And then the people will go, the leader will go and live the scenario. But all their stuff will come up, all the things. And then we do time out and they get immediate feedback. You know, the way you tilted your head, the way that you, the way that you used that word, the way that you shifted your body, sent this message, which was not the message you really wanted to send. Okay. Right? Okay. Or that if they're going into um, do a presentation or to testify in front of something, somebody, how they show up comes from practice and what and here's the thing you know i talked to you about what leaders and multicultural leaders if they've not been in sports their lives and had coaches they don't understand that the reason some of those leaders who have been in sports are so good at what they do is they know how to ask for advice and help they're very it's normal for them to have coaches and advisors. If you come up from the community, if you come from the Bronx, you know, in like a neighborhood that I go, we didn't have any coaches and we didn't have anybody doing that for us, right? We had no games. We were, we uh, we was, <laughs> and if we did have people around other day, sometimes those people weren't in our highest best interests, right? To give us advice. Exactly. And so now you, you're fighting and you get your degree and you're fighting and you're there and you're, in this position, nobody's telling you how to network at a cocktail party. Nobody's telling you how to be powerful when you're sitting at a meeting. Nobody's sharing with you the insights. It, it takes you years of falling on your face, right? right. To at least have a sense of that. I want to cut out those years. Okay. And so by giving you a live experience, I, like I'll be brought into high colleges. The colleges will hire me. I do a... I do dining edit etiquette on steroids, which is I'm going to give you tons of information so you don't fall on your face, but man, you are going to walk out knowing how to be powerful and influential, you know, because our, some of the places where our kids go to school, Hunter College, even in Delphi, you know, it's not like they're giving us the tools to be influential and powerful when we're corporate, right they tell us the education but not but we need yeah, it, it's, skills. yeah they what they do is that they give us the practical tools but they don't really teach us how to use them in real life so it's a lot of it's a lot of technology a lot of technique but very little in, okay, so this in, you know, in this scenario, not that they, there's no way that they can ever go through every scenario, but they don't go through any scenarios. So right. we go out there and we're like a deer in headlights. Um, right. And, and then you can't figure out like, oh my God, I never thought of this. or I never, but who, who knew, like, who told you, how would you know? Right. Right. Like I was, I was with, um, she is a senior vice president in a very large corporation, a black woman, and was with another woman who is an executive director of a very powerful organization. Uh -huh. So from the outside world, wow, they're there. And I was sitting with them and I was sharing about how to work a room. How, how do you when you go to a networking piece as a leader, how do you work that room? How do you connect with people? And I was sharing techniques and like, nobody ever taught us that. No, I, gosh, if I only knew that, I'm so grateful I know it now, but I wish I had known it back then. I, nobody taught me. I didn't come from that background to hear, or, uh, nobody shared that with me. Or to, you know, it was just teaching them um, the basic things. It's not, let me change it. Basic to some people, but if you've never heard it, it's not basic. Right. You know, how to prepare, if you're going to a business dinner, how to prepare for beforehand, what to do when you're in it, what to do after it's Because let me tell you, we don't, we don't ever teach that. And it's not business, ed it's not dining etiquette. It's 
influence power broking action steps. So when I work with politicians, women who are running for office, who are brilliant, fantastic, I'm giving them cues about how to be seen, heard, and have a communication impression so that people behind their backs say, wow, she's powerful. Oh my God, she's, she's intense. She's powerful. She, you bet she's brilliant. She's smart. She's got it going on, you know, and why do we have to wait 20, 30 years together? We don't have to, you know, we need coaches and advisors to help us get there. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Um, so when you, when you have these women, you do these one-on-one, -on -one, do you do it? It's, it's, do you I would also do a large scale. I do it. So I work with uh, Walmart. They fly in 60 women of the top women executives from around the world come and meet with me. And we'd go through scenarios. We go, we, there we, it's pretty big. We have a lot of scenarios and these women come in and they learn how and they live through it and they get the feedback. It's pretty amazing because those women that have gone over the, within uh, two months of having gone through the program, 20% of them get promotions, significant promotions. Over a year, they are all in higher level positions. So almost 100% increase their ability to promote. Then we do at large conferences. So when I speak, I speak at colleges, I speak at major organizations, uh, employee resource groups, corporations on sales. We will do a modified thing experience for them I always do a use or I make sure that they're laughing. I make sure they're getting the information. I make sure that they're intense. We have chance. So they remember it most important that they remember it when it's all said and done. Right. So that's how we do it. So we do a, and then, Oh, shh, wait a minute. I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> we have um, an on, a new online membership that is going to be launching in August and it's for specifically it's an exclusive me membership for leaders authorities and experts females who want to have more influence impact and inspire and be an exclusive group whereby they can get the insights and information to be stronger more powerful and also to build connections with each other and get this go ahead ask me how much it is. How much is it? <laughs> I want to know. And I'm going to tell you how much it is because most people think like, oh, that's going to be thousands of dollars and all that stuff. No, it's $35 a month. Seriously? Yeah. And wow. So $35 a month and it's going to be, um, we'll launch it in August. And okay. it's going to be, we'll Stand have. Um, me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's really about connection. So like where you're at, it's, can we connect with people? Who else has other shows? And how can we cross uh, purpose it? How can we sell each other, not sell, but promote each other? And from who can I interview? What authors are on in this I can interview? So it's really about helping you because here you are influencing thousands by pe of people watching your show. Okay. You have great ability to have impact and influence. And so I want to provide a vehicle for people like you to, to one, be able to connect with each other. Two, to let our hair down in a way I'm saying, okay, this, I'm in another group that I started and we have 700 global leaders in it, all women. It's to have the kind of conversations of, Hello, where do we put that power pack that they give us? We not, we're not men. So where do we put the power pack to one woman saying, I'm going through menopause. I'm on stage in front of 4,000 and I'm sweating. Oh. Do you okay. know that I mean? real stuff? Real stuff. Okay. But at the same time saying, I'm, I, I need some author. I need some a leader to talk about this because I'm writing an article for Red Book Magazine. Okay. So it's, it's taking leaders and authorities and experts who are women and, and put them in a place where we together 
that I can help them inspire more, lead more, give more, influence, be the most magnificent beings that we desperately need in this world. And we need them now. I need people like you and women like you to share their brilliance with the world because it is time. And I'm not coming from a place of saying, I'm, I'm coming from a place of saying, you were blessed with the brilliance to be able to influence others. Absolutely. I get that. Yes. Yes. That you have the tools and the techniques and the support. Right. To say, I'm not alone in this. I I, I'm going to go, I'm going forward and not just put on my Spanx. And there are a lot of groups out there that you can be your professional self, right? But where do you get to be your striving self? Right. And where can you show that vulnerability? Because I don't care how strong you are, you have a vulnerable side. And and we know that from the behavioral health background and understanding. But um, I find that a lot of these leadership groups and the leadership um, is they're very like staunch, very rigid. And so yeah, you like a of your butt. Be, yeah, exactly. And you don't get to be like, you know what? I just gave a fabulous talk. It was it was awesome. People were raving about it. But honestly, I just want to sit here and cry. And you know, I'm I'm I I, I knew I could do better, or there was there was something that I did not convey, even though they think it was great. I know it could be better. So having exactly. a place where you can actually just you know, be able to talk about that and let your hair down and say, hi, yi, yi. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And so where can you go to share from your truth, from your saying, you know, I, I, here, I did this thing and I, everybody loved me, but let me tell you something. I was, you know, I sat there and I'm, and I'm thinking about the two, three, four things that I dropped out that I wanted to, and, and this is working on me now. Right. It influencing how I'm feeling and put, projecting out in the world. Okay. Totally know that when we're in that place and we're not sure about how we're projecting, right? We know that we have to be emanating. We know, and we know that when our minds, and this is for everybody, when our minds start clouding and we start having this conflict, it really influences and impacts. And then you start like, okay, now I'm going to be, people think I'm a leader because a, a liar because I'm presenting over this stuff and I'm presenting this stuff, but I feel like such a liar. And if they only knew that my shoes were killing me right now, if they knew that these shoes are really not the shoes I should be wearing. And how do they know? And now I got to be out over here and I'm going to be over there. Oh, where can I just go? Ah! Right. And so a bunch right. of community members saying, been there, done that, love you, go for it. You can do that. Yeah, I'll do this or fix that, or this is how I did it. And exactly. it's that, it's really because it's that support yes. that, that you need from somebody who's, who's been there or somebody who is there. Exactly. So I, that's, I love it. I absolutely, sign me up. I'm, I'm there. I'm totally well, there. I'll be there, you know, where, where we'll be posting it. We'll be posting it. We, you know, anybody that wants to know, you can go to, um, if you go to pegeen.com, you go to the bottom of the page and you just uh, sign up for my newsletter, you'll, we'll be sending out information. Um, we always, I, just, I have videos there and I have articles, but this particular group will be announced through that. And okay. I will tell you, I, I, can you, can we make a promise over here? Yes. Okay. That you have me on the show when it's launched. So we can tell the world about it. That we can talk all about it? Yeah. So you have to oh. have me on the show oh. again. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's a promise. That's a promise. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we, so we, we're talking about all, all of the things that you've done with women. <laughs> and working with women is not an easy job. Yeah. I know that I'm a woman. So there, what are the, the, the attitudes that you get that, that you find as leaders get in our ways, especially being women, because uh, we're such complex beings. Right. I mean, the reality is, I mean, and you know, we're, we're just as fierce and, and awesome and great as we are, you know, babies and, and, you know, just life just sometimes just get, we beat, nobody beats us up better than ourselves. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are the attitudes coming from that behavioral health? And because I'm not going to say because it's not mental health. It's not. But from that behavioral health perspective, what are the, the two attitudes or the attitudes that you see most get in, in a woman's way when she's a leader and when she's oh. in that position? So here's the, here's the first one. I have to be perfect and better than everybody else. Hmm. So I had to be, I got here and I had to work twice as hard than the guy down the block to be noticed. I have to be perfect. I have to, you, you don't understand. I have to be this way. And I, and every single one that I've ever spoken to, every single one, it has nothing to do with them. They have been determined, fearless perfectionist who have fought it since the beginning but they use the the rationale you don't know what it's like i have to be perfect okay. right the problem with that is they're only seeing from their experience so i did a whole research about white guys are diverse too they don't have a clue what the people on the other side also have gone through Right? They just make an assumption, oh, it was easy for you. Pain, it was easy for you. It was easy for you. Because right. they, so, so, so the first part about it is a mental thought of, I have to be perfect. I have to be better than that person. That's incredibly stressful. What that does is they won't apply for jobs. So women, and women specifically, women of color, super they will not apply for jobs until they feel 100% secure that they know how to do the job. Uh, Men will apply for the job when they feel 40% confident that they could do the job. Wow. So women will not even apply for the job. So, and, so and there's no way that they can know how to do the job because it's new. How could you know, how could you know to do a job that's ahead of you if you've never been there? So okay. you're, you're self-sabotage right there, right? So that's okay. the first one. Okay. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. And I'm going to get to the second one. As, as, as women entrepreneurs, do you feel that that holds women back or, or to, from becoming entrepreneurs? Not only from coming, from going after contracts. So let me, let me, so, so to give people uh, their perspective of where, why I'm having this, I have the experience to talk about this. I'm the first Latina to win the uh, number three out of the fastest, the first Latina to reach any of this, but um, it was the number three fastest growing privately owned company in North Florida. Uh, you see the picture behind here last year. I'm just giving them context, all right? Last year, um, Minari Business um, Enterprise Magazine and Macy's named me one of the top three women who rock in business in the United States. Um, and I'm the, one of the only companies to ever receive in the De Department of Defense a rating of excellence for contracts over a million dollars. So just to give you the structure where I'm going to talk about right now. Okay. Because... Here is what happens with women entrepreneurs is one, statistically through this BA, we think we downplay making a million dollars. So statistically through the SBA, 6% of all small businesses make over a million dollars, but only 3% of women business owners make over a million dollars in sales. And what happens is they don't show up. So you'll find this in your, just in your show. If you think about how many people, obviously including even me, I did it by accident, you will reach out to people to get interviewed. And what you'll find is guys will go, yeah, I'll be on. Okay, when? I'm tomorrow, I'm, I'm there. I'm so there. You reach out to women entrepreneurs and they'll go, really? I don't know. I don't have, I'm not ready yet but my business isn't really doing anything. Why do you want to hire me? Why do you want me to speak about my business? I really, it's not there. Or so you, women tend to not want to say I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm showing up. 
Uh, and in, to do business, you have to do that. You have to be able to sell yourself. You have to be able to market yourself. You have to say and be willing to say, I'm awesome. I'm great. What I have for you is so fabulous. So from an entrepreneurial perspective, we get excited if we replaced our salary without being excited about the potential of, of how do we grow the business. I'm in a course right now run by the SBA called Emerging Leaders, and it's for businesses that are looking to scale and grow. Um, and I'm back in the business, in, in the course, because I want to refresh a lot of my skills and be more, more strategic in growing the business. Of, so of this business, this is really awful. There were 12 of us. I, I don't have enough fingers to make it 12. <laughs> 12 of us three women of the 12. Uh, there were three, four white guys. The rest were other people of color. They've all dropped down with flies. You know who's in the course right now? Myself, two of the white guys, and an Asian man were the only ones that the, all the women dropped out. There were four women. All the, it happens all the time. It's, and we say, well, family got on the way. We say, this, I, I got busy. We say, we, we, and they all sound so great. The excuses sound so great. Mm -hmm. But the, the matter is, we pulled ourselves out of the game. Okay. okay. We, mm -hmm. And so people, how can you say that, you know, this was sick and that was sick. And, you know, I did the same thing. I pulled myself in the, out of a board. Mom was sick. I, I had to go take care of my mother. Really, I didn't have to do that. Looking back, you know what? I didn't have to do that. I could have stayed on the board and I could have handled that because really the board wasn't that much work, right? But the drama, I don't I mean, we... A very wise woman, she had her business is $250 million. She's raised her children through her growing her business. She's been in, she shared the most wise piece of wisdom for me as an entrepreneur and any woman that she talks to the run. She said, your family needs two things from you, your brain and your heart. All else can be hired out. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. So they need your brain of your wisdom, your insights, maybe your, your ideas. Mm -hmm. You need to know you love them, you care of them, but you do not have to do their laundry, and you don't have to clean up the stuff, and you don't have to run to the store and go cooking, and you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to... I don't have to run to my mom's nursing home and do it. So I could hire an aide to do that. She needs me to see her and love her. She needs me to tell her, counsel her, but she, she doesn't need me to do that stuff. That is not love. Okay. I love that. I love that. Okay. So I need that because I'm very curious because this was awesome. This was just one attitude and the second attitude. So the second attitude is I don't need that. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I don't, I don't need, yeah. I don't need, I don't need the responsibility. I don't need the raise. I don't, I'm good. If God wanted me to have it, I'd have it. So it's all good. And the truth of the matter is we do have to be grateful. We do have to be, understand that we're blessed. We do have to understand all that, but we have to be ambitious. Ambitious is not a dirty word. It is okay for women and, and, and anybody, but it's okay for you to be ambitious, to want more for yourself, to, to desire the opportunity, to drive your passion so that you can be more. That's how what life is. Life is constantly this growth experience. And when we say, oh, it's okay, I mean, I mean, that's okay. Uh, uh. We're, we're giving 
ourselves into an, an experience that says, I don't need anything else. My life is good. And that's not living. Right. And, and I, I totally agree. As a foresight strategist, what I do is that I, I bring into companies into small businesses how do you become more innovative what what was the money that you're leaving on the table because you don't realize how you can actually grow and and you know be able to develop your business and through through you know through being creative and innovative and and looking at and i have to tell you for the most part the women are like you know my business really is good enough and yeah. that, that attitude of good enough, she goes, you know what? I, I'm innovative. You know, I created, but the thing is, and this is one of the things that I talk about over and over again, is that it has to be perpetual. It has to be a cycle of constantly reinventing, fixing, constantly looking at the problems and, you know, and, and again, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It can be one good idea. Nobody ever made it with one good idea. It's great for the moment, but then what happens if a better one comes or if, it's, it's no longer the fad. So when I try to explain this, they're like, oh, yeah, but it's good enough. What, I, what I'm doing, my business, how I'm doing it is good enough. And that good enough is what's killing businesses. Yeah. And yeah. women are notorious, notorious for this. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's that good enough. The man. Good. And it's, and it's because, and I, listen, listen, I've lived through this. I know I've had the ups and I've had the crash and burns. And it's really hard when you've had, a, when your business starts crashing, which all business does, there's always a down, right? You can't go down, you can't go up. But when you're down, it's so hard and you got to rank it up. You got to push it. You got to, yeah, you know, oh, come on, you can do it again. You can, let's push, you can, you can. But that's really hard because if you don't do that, then you get into good enough, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Good deal, spend the ego, everything works out. And that's not how it's got, it can work. It's got to be, you've got to dig in and turn and crank up the car again. And that is the piece that we never talk about in business. We never share. I tell people all the time, everybody, everybody sees this about business, right? But that's a lie. Right. This is more like this. Yes. Yes. And so you got to know. And of course, in the beginning, those crashes are harder and lower. And the, the gets, then they, but they still come down. It's just they not. Gotta, a, I'm with a friend who just right. lost $5 million. You know, when, right. and, and even though his business is made, it still hurts to lose $5 million. You know, so right. this, these pieces, right over there. Right. When you're in that place, how are you? going to crank yourself up how how are you going to not just sit back and say it's okay so I, I want it to be here but all right all right my business is my business is going to be here instead Fabian, that's just how it is right they they give up the dream of where it could or go they give up or they give up that's they the other give thing. they give up they're I like oh up. i tried it it didn't work I, I, I'm sorry, it didn't work for me. I tried it. I gave it all I had. And, and it's, that's the thing with business. And, and again, I was talking, when we were talking earlier, is that tenacity, that perseverance, that, you know what? I, you know, I tell everybody, I quit every night, every night. I said, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. And in the morning I get up and I'm like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> but every, I, I give myself the option to quit every single evening. I'm allowed to quit. In the morning, I get up again, back at it. I, I, I reach, reach the point, and I totally am with you on this. You know, you got to, you know, in my just in this course, we were talking the other night, and so here are we, this four business, we've all, we've all been a million dollar business. We've all lost, we've all gained, we've all lost. We've, you know, some of them are going through really hard times. And we were talking about that. I said, you know, I'm, I'm just too stupid to know that I should have quit. I, I just, I'm like the donkey with the carrot. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can do this. I know I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Come on, I can do it. I can, you know, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I, I think that that's the biggest, the, the, now I will tell you this, and this is, not everybody needs to be a million dollar business. Not everybody needs to be at a, a high level, right? But, every, not but everybody I believe, needs I do believe that everybody has that potential. Totally. But everybody has to decide, has to have a strategy right. for whatever it is they're going to do. So if you want to have a lifestyle business whereby you're making, you know, you're never going to be, you're not going to be interested in selling it. You're not going to be be interested in creating a legacy to hand down to somebody else you're you're you want to be able to make enough money to live the life that you have because you've watched way too much videos online that you can live the life and work in Tahiti and work off the the, the computer and you can make a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is but unless you have a strategy unless you take that dream and you put it down and you say what is it that needs Yes. What, what, is that, what do I really want to have for my life? Absolutely. What do I really want to have that business to look like? And then what do I really need? What are the things that I think that I need to do? And here's what's really important. It's what do I need to, what do I think I need to do to get there? Because, and I read, and I say that, what do I think? Because we could go from Florida to California. We know we're going to hit San Jose. We know we're going there. The journey, we think we're going to take the highway this way. We definitely know we're going west, right? We think we know that. We know we're going to get gas. We know that we're going to have to get the car. We know that we're going to have to go, but we don't know everything. So you got to start with your plan of at least what you think you know but you think it and that's all you can do right now. That's really, really good. Okay. And then you have to know that when you hit a certain area, something is going to happen. Your tire is going to blow or something like that. And you're going to learn something else, but you don't give up going to San Jose. Right. Well, bro, you don't say, Hey, you know, I'm done. This, this was too hard to get to New Jersey. I, I, I'm done. Okay. You don't know that. Right. You keep on going and it doesn't matter how long it takes you just created an experience that you want to have. Right. And the best piece of advice. Oh my God. Can I share one of my best? Absolutely. Yes. Please do. Please do. So I was on 47th street and seventh and I was in the course. I was new to the business, you know, new to speaking and, and doing this. And I'm standing and then there's this is a guy, Bob Frere, and he's a long time speaker and he had just closed a big deal. And I'm, I was hurting her. Ting. And I'm standing and I must have looked at him like this. And, you know, like as he's sharing, yeah, I just closed the steel. It was so great. And we're, I'm going to start it. And I'm working for this big company and we're going to be doing all this stuff with him. And I was like, and he looked at me and he goes, hey, and he, he's a real New Yorker. He goes, hey, just know this. I'm a freaking 20 year overnight sensation. Oh my good. Yes. I love it. I love and, it. Yes. I got to tell you, I held a 20 year overnight sensation. I, that really made me think that this was not a short term business. Mm -hmm. This is a long term investment. My. And, and, and for those that are listening that are maybe in corporate stuff, it's the same thing. You make an investment, you decide. You know, those of you that have decided to stay in business, I'm, you said, I, I'm going to stay in this until I get my pension. So you can be 25. That was not my choice for me, right? But you need to know that this is not a short-term game. Right. When you're an entrepreneur, when you're in business, it's a long-term game. Yes. And it's going to have ups and it's going to have downs. But you need to be in it for the long haul. It's a roller coaster. Like, it's like, going, like yeah, a marriage. You know, I'm sorry? It's like a marriage. You need to make the decision that you're going to make this work. 
and and really, you really are married to your business, and it just, you have to make that decision. You know, come come rain or come storm, I'm in it for the long run, and I'm going to make this work. And you know what? This is this is the only way that it's going to work. Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Not at all. It is so not for the faint of heart. It's <laughs> just you know, I keep on telling people it's kind of like. Um, you go to an amusement park and you're a little kid and you go on the little purple donkey of the roller coaster, right? Yeah, and you get on yeah. that and you're scared, right? You're just trying, you're scared and you get on and you're, and you're so excited that, you're, ah! and then you get a little bit older, you get on the bigger roller coaster, right? And, and you're still scared, but then you get to the bigger, really, really, big, boom, 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 and you're still scared and you're doing it and there's joy and there's laughter and there's like amazing. And then you go, I'm going to do it again that's really what this is like. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's, I don't cry anymore. Probably Good for you. <laughs> uh, just because I've been knocked down so many times. It's like after a while, well, I'm not gonna waste my energy on that anymore. Right. You know, on that, that emotion. Do right. I cry, do I cry about probably things about love and, and, and family? Yes, but not about I, I don't know. I've just put myself into so many high, tense, high risk, rough situations that I've become. Uh, I have fallen in love with my goddess warrior. Okay. I love that part of me. Okay. So oh, I like it. I love, love being a, I'm feisty. I'm fearless. I'm focused and fun. Oh, I'll, I'll send you, uh, uh, when I finish with this, I'll send you a link to a song that I wrote and I, I and it's my Feisty Feeler song. Yeah. And it's something that um, I believe your audience would love. Okay. I know you would love it. I know that. Um, but it's, it's, you know, when we're feisty, we're fearless, we're focused, we're fun. I go feisty and fearless and focus and fun. Because you need to know that about yourself. That this business isn't just about money. It's about the discovery of your brilliance. Right, right. And to be able to share that, to be able, because that's what I find. I, I have to tell you, every time that I take stuff that's in my head and, I, and I'm able to share it with somebody else and I make it comprehensive that they're like oh wow that they've discovered something from our conversation from our coaching from a consulting yeah. i am elated and this is like way before the check is written way before because i am passionate about my brilliance i am passionate about what i know and i know that if you use what i have you're going to be better than me you know, and I know that, and that's where my excitement comes in. So yeah. you're right. it's not about the money. It's about where, what you can do with what's in my head, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. When you know yeah. that. Right. When, and when you, you know, know that. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the excitement that, that again, that, that's so it's, it's unbelievable. It just, I enjoy it so much because I enjoy that transference. It's a transference from what I have to be able to transfer it on to somebody else. That's my thrill. That's my get high. That's my get high. Honestly, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that when when you're what you're talking about is so. That's what keeps an entrepreneur's life growing, right? It, right. It, it's it's being able to say. That, that I'm here to do this. So I just, I, I, I'm, I just want to share some, and I'll share it with you in a minute. Um, but I love it. an artist too. <laughs> this is a creative side of Pijing. <laughs> yeah. Of course, now I'm trying to get it to go. Can you hear that? Yes. I 
action, action, we want action, this is what I say. I just realized that's showing up backwards for some reason. No, no, uh, no, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it correctly. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm seeing it correctly, yes. Yep. And we'll give everyone the link to this so that they can, yeah, yeah we'll give them the link. So that, that will be great. Well, I, know, I know people that we have another version of it, which is, it's my power. It's my power. Right. And so people play it. We have lots of entrepreneurs that play it in the morning or when they're feeling down. Yeah. Like, it's my power. It's my power. Because to thrive and succeed, we've got to own our power. Right. Right. We've got to be who we are. So, yay. Okay. So I have one last question for you, and that's about your book. Um, we're going to give people the, the link to your book. But the book, sometimes you need to kick your own butt. Yes. It has become a huge sensation. Why do people love this book so much? So they love this book so much for a couple of Where, reasons. One, it's okay. simple. Uh -huh. An easy so, read. It's easy. It's made to be put in your pocketbook. It's made to be put in your bathroom. It's made to be put in your briefcase because it in, in it has the tips, triads, and quotes that you need to inspire yourself to action. It has some short stories in it that I personally, the, the short stories that I've had to live through to be able to move to the next level. It's, it's a very concrete, small powerful and concrete and i and it's one of the books which one of the things that i love about the, my books is i i love you all i really do i love you all but i don't write the books for you i write the books for me <laughs> because i'm i'm writing what i couldn't find in a bookstore i'm writing what i needed to keep myself focused to keep feeling fearless to move in a direction of of power and to feel aligned with where i needed to go and what's really amazing is when you write from that humanity when you write from that truth for right. entrepreneurs and people it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting that people relate um right. and so this has been named the uh, number four well for four years in a row has been one of the top 10 books for women and, and human resources. We've sold well over 20,000 books, 20,000. Wow. Um, it's a really awesome book, if I do say so myself, and I'm very proud of it. And we'll be um, putting out to some new books. Um, you know, and then we have, do you, do you have groups that speak Spanish? I do, I do. So yeah. my Read and Think Big book is also in Spanish, and they can all go on my website at www.pegine.com and see it there. They could also purchase it through Amazon.com. Okay, fabulous. And we will be giving them the links to both those. I am so excited to have you. I am thrilled. I cannot wait to meet you in person so that I can hug you because I'm a I'll hugger. I hug. Love that. Love. That's right. The love. Because um, again, it, you're, I've been look, I've looked up to you for about two or three years, like I said. And like a year ago, I was like, I have to have her on my show. Whenever I have a show, I didn't have a show yet. <laughs> I was like, I need to have her on. And I, I love your energy. I love your feistiness. And that's because like me, you're a Bronx girl. You're a social work bronze girl. And, um, and I love that. I love that about you. And I love your innovation because again, I always bring it back to this because what I always want my audience to, to take away is the fact that you can create anything. Don't let, you know, status, class, money, you know, uh, uh, ethnicity, degree, not degree, right. hold you back from all exactly. that you can do. You need to be innovative. You need to create, 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 create. We are beings that are made to create. Yes. And constant, constant creation. And when we don't, when we waste those hours sitting in front of the TV, just turning, you know, when we waste that time, I'm like, my goodness, if you have nothing to do, read a good book, read a good self-help book. 
not a novel. Read a good self-help book because you will walk away. And I am who I am today because of the time that I've invested in myself. Right. To be Absolutely. better. And the better I am, the better I am for my for my clients, the better I am for, you know, the better I am for humanity as a whole, because I can be, you know, on a plane, I can be, you know, in, a, in an open forum, I can be at a party. And I always have those nuggets that I can deposit, because I spend so much time bettering myself, so that I can better the people around me. So oh. That's the one thing I always want people to take away. And that's your message is so in line with my message. You didn't let a social work degree define you. You didn't let, you know, you didn't let even your jobs define you. You were like, I'm bigger. I'm better. I, you, I can fly. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. I am so there with you. I, I'm, it's like, I just know, I just know that there's, Every time you stretch yourself a little bit more, right? Not a little more. You influence a little bit more. You make a little bit more difference. You make a little bit more uh, right. impact, and then you're there, and and you want to go a little bit more, you, right? And so, what happens is is when we hold ourselves back, when we when we believe that there is no more, mm -hmm. when we believe that there that we can't take another step oh my god this is really important the the truth of the matter is you are telling that to yourself right and right. that's not true right absolutely it's not true absolutely it's absolutely 100 percent and, and we are two girls from the bronx who thought we had reached the ultimate dream when we got our degrees yeah and yet Look how far we've come, and then the best is yet to come. Oh, the best I don't is. Know about all you, but I'm just starting. <laughs> That's I, here you go. I, mean, I, just, I just, I just, I'm born today to, yeah. you know, and I don't mean it from a religious basis. I just mean from that that this is all I have is today. Right. Today I have tomorrow. I have you know. Hopefully I'll have tomorrow. But this is where I am today. And what uh, what happened in the past? I mean, with all the pictures and stuff like that. That's that was done. Complete. Finished. Past. More. Where my thing is is here going forward. So you want to do me a big favor? Sure. Do, okay. So sure. what you're gonna do is okay. Smile. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Now you have my picture. <laughs> You're so cute. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed my conversation with you. This was awesome. And again, I want to let want to let the audience know that next week we'll be back with another super fabulous guest because what I do is I live on this quest to constantly bring you the best people that I know, the best people that I can reach. And trust me. You have no idea what I've gone through to try to find Pegeen, but I did. And I'm so excited. I am so excited. And this is only the beginning. The best is yet to come. We're going to, you know, again, I'll have you back on the show and we'll keep seeing each other. And I, again, I can't wait to meet you and see you. And to my audience, I'll see you next week. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Bye, everybody. I want to thank you for being with us on Business Foresight, always creating strategies towards an extraordinary future. Remember, I'm here with you with strategies every Saturday. I'll see you next week.